Today, the winner of the November election, Joe Biden, sworn in as the 46th president of the United States, the very spot where just two weeks ago, violent Trump supporters stormed the Capitol. And history made today as Kamala Harris becomes the first black woman with Asian descent to become vice president. The new president now laying out his vision for how he can bring the country together after a bitter election cycle. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest from Capitol Hill. Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. and Dr. Jill Biden. It was perhaps the most unusual peaceful transfer of power in modern American history. The families of President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris joined by bipartisan congressional leaders. The swearing in happening on the very steps where two weeks ago a violent mob of insurrectionist Trump supporters stormed the Capitol, leaving five people dead. Vice President Harris escorted by one of the heroes that day, Capitol Hill police officer Eugene Goodman. The man whose quick thinking steered rioters away from the unguarded Senate chamber, allowing Vice President Pence and lawmakers to escape. The first woman, black American and person of Asian descent to be sworn in as vice president, taking her oath from the first Latina on the Supreme Court, Justice Sonia Sotomayor. I, Kamala Davy Harris, solemnly swear. Watching on, former presidents and their spouses, the Obamas, the Clintons, the Bushes, and former Vice President Mike Pence, but not the Trumps. And then history. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. Joe Biden swearing his oath of office, becoming the 46th president of the United States, his term beginning at one of the most troubled moments in American history. Biden takes over as the country grapples with the COVID-19 pandemic, a ravaged economy, a racial reckoning, and deep political divides. Biden focusing first on unity. We must end this uncivil war that pits red against blue, rural versus urban, or, or, rural versus urban conservative versus liberal. We can do this if we open our souls instead of hardening our hearts. Without ever mentioning his name, Biden appealing directly to angry Trump supporters, but also calling out the lies and mistruths that have divided the nation. Hear me clearly. Disagreement must not lead to disunion. And I pledge this to you. I will be a president for all Americans, all Americans. Today's inauguration of President Biden and Vice President Harris was unlike any we have seen before. With the pandemic, we didn't see the huge crowds and a massive security presence kept thousands of people away. Tonight, we are taking you right to Washington to get a feel of what security was like and what happens tonight in D.C. Our reporter Gabe Cohen joins us now. Hi there, Gabe. Hi there. Well, first off, let's talk about the overall feeling in D.C. right now. Is there any tension? Well, certainly security and safety was the big concern coming into the day, not only at the Capitol, but really across D.C. Over the past uh, week, even two weeks since the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol, we've seen the number of National Guard troops across the city growing steadily. And as of today, there were about 25,000 troops uh, that were now deployed to D.C. There were concerns about a potential inside job, an inside threat. We know at least 12 National Guard troops were removed from their security posts ahead of today because of either odd behavior or potential ties to right-wing fringe groups. We had also heard chatter of members of QAnon who were potentially going to be impersonating troops and trying to create a, a security breach during the inauguration. We can tell you, fortunately, as of now, well, it's been pretty quiet in that department, but certainly uh, folks are still on high alert, especially security officials across D.C. We know that the number of troops is going to be declining in the coming hours and days, but we're expecting about 6,000 of those National Guard troops are going to be staying in D.C. for about 30 days just to make sure everything stays safe. An inauguration like we've never seen before. Gabe Cohen, thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Well, earlier this morning, former President Donald Trump left Washington, D.C. for the last time as commander in chief, but not before holding his own send off ceremony. He spoke briefly before boarding Air Force One, thanking supporters. So with that, I, I just want to say you are amazing people. This is a great, great country. It is my greatest honor and privileged to have been your president. Always fight for you. 
I will be watching, I will be listening, and I will tell you that the future of this country has never been better. Today was the first time in 150 years an outgoing president did not attend the incoming president's inauguration.